but many will not. And they said there's going to come a time when in the morning the sun is going to rise and those village of stone will be there. And in the evening there will just be steam coming from the ground. There will be as steam. And in the center of many of those villages of stone when they turn to steam, the Navy people will turn to steam also because they never woke up and left the village. And this used to bother me when I was a young man. I used to ask the elders, is it there anything we can do? And they said, well, it's just that way that if the person does not have the spiritual eyes to see, it's very hard to show them. Or if they don't have the ears to hear, it's very hard to speak with them. We wish that we could go get them all, but we can't. It's just that some are not going to wake up. But some will wake up. And so they say there's going to be the third shaking of the earth. It's going to be not a good thing to see, but we will survive it. We will survive it. And when we survive it, then there's going to be another attempt to make a circle of the human beings on the earth. And this time the native people will not have to petition to join, but will be invited to enter the circle because they say the attitude towards us will have changed by then. And people will invite us into the circle and all the four colors of the four directions will share their wisdoms and there will be a peace on earth. This is coming close. All the times when I share this message of the prophecies, people say, can't we change it? Could we stop it? The answer is yes. The prophecies are always either or. We could have came together way back there in 1565 and we could have had a great civilization, but we didn't. Always along the path of these prophecies, we could have came together. We still could. If we could stop racial and religious disharmony, we would not have to go through this third shaking. The elders say the chance of that is pretty slim. It seems to me like it's pretty slim too. But they say what we can do is we can cushion it. The word they, we use is cushion. We can cushion it. So it won't be quite as bad. How do we do this? We do this by sharing the teaching that will reunite us. The Hopis and the prophecies say there will be a religion that comes here. Maybe it will be true and bring unity, or maybe it will not bring unity. If it does not bring unity, a second religion will come. And the people of this religion are known in the Hopi language as the Bahani, the people of Baha. Ni means people of. So I was looking for the people of Baha. I wondered who the people of Baha were. I was a Baha'i quite a while before somebody told me that Baha'i means people of Baha. I thought, oh my God. Well, I was looking for it all these years and I never even noticed it. And I found it. I was stubborn, didn't want to become a Baha'i, but my grandfather that passed away, you know, he must have found out about it in the next realm because he came back to me four times. Tell me, hey, look at that again. Look at that again. Look one more time. Baha, it means light or glory. Baha'i means followers of the light. There's the people of Baha. We've been waiting for these people a long time. They say that it will bring a teaching that will unite the earth. So we need to share this teaching. They say the fire will come from the north. So here we are in the circle in the north, talking about the Bahanis, the people of Baha and the teachings of Baha'u'llah. When I heard about these, none of them made any sense. But now it has, most of it has come to pass. Last night on the news, they said the house in the sky will be put up in 1996. It was going to be put up sooner, but it's been postponed for four years. Maybe it will be postponed again, but in not too long, it's going to go up. The earth, as we know it, is going to change. Each of us carry, I believe, a sacred drop of light. In the Indian teachings, they say it takes nine ancestors to agree before conception can occur. Nine ancestors of the husband or the wife have to come together in the spiritual realm and say, we will bring life before a person or woman can become pregnant. At that time, the soul is formed. 
I delivered my first daughter, and I, a man who, from the blood reserve who went to South Dakota and was the first blood to pierce for in 82 years, he came to my house by coincidence four days before my wife went into labor. Each night we had a ceremony. And after the morning of, on the morning after the fourth ceremony, my wife went into labor at sunrise. And that night at sunset, the daughter was born. And I took her out and I cut the cord, you know, and I noticed that at the Sundance that the Lakota people do in South Dakota, they pass that pipe three times and they don't take it in the fourth time. And even in Washington, I've heard the coming of a child is like the coming of a new pipe. And when I was delivering my daughter, I happened to notice that the skull came out three times. And on the fourth time, her head came out like the coming of a pipe. So I took her out and I cleaned her up and I washed her and I, I first I put her on the mother instantly. But then after a few minutes, I we washed her up. There was a circle of people just about like this around my wife and, and praying and people with different backgrounds. And we looked up and through the ceiling came a small drop of blue light. When it got close to the child, we could not see it. That was her soul. She would carry that light throughout her. In that is her special uniqueness as a being, her spiritual power. In that are gifts. After we go through, and then we carry it back here and it radiates to the mind, but for some reason in this cycle, we've been in the lower natures, the animal part, but now we're going into the human world. And the mind is going to be opened up to the radiance of that our own soul. And the cycle of the human beings is going to come about. And something so good is going to happen on this earth that cannot even be described. <clears throat> they always say it in different ways. They say something like this. They say, there will be grass at that time when they make that circle and bring the peace on the earth. There will be blades of grass that have not quite come through the earth. They, even they will try to push themselves up to be part of that day when the sun rises. The elders that stand like this, they say, out here outside this building, long, long before there was a fairgrounds here, there were native people. They say, Many of these many people in different tribes, they were aware of these things, and they told their children. Their children grew up. You know, one time the people came from the Hopis, the scientists came to the Hopis, and they said, we want to take a piece of the stone tablets. Well, they said, we want to take the stone tablets to a scientific laboratory to determine how old they are. The Hopis said, we know how old they are. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the scientist says, we want to confirm it. Well, the Hopis let them take a little piece, and they did that, the carbon dating method. They found these tablets were at least 10,000 years old, maybe 50. So when I say thousands of years ago, there were native people that spoke of these things. That's exactly what I mean. They told their children. And thousands of years ago, their children grew up and told their children. And then their children grew up and told their children. And they spoke about the people that will live at this time, and now it is us. We are the ones they spoke of long ago. They say to be allowed to become into creation and live upon the earth at this time is a great honor. In the cycle of time, from the beginning to the end, this time that we're in now will change the purification of all things. They say this is the hardest time to live, but it's also the greatest honor to be allowed to live and see this. In the state of Washington in 1855, they signed treaties and made 22 Indian reservations. They wanted to do it before there was problems. They thought they were advanced at the time. They had learned from what had happened elsewhere. They made 22 Indian reservations and the elders spoke in 1855 and they said, we are going to become weaker and you are going to become stronger. And if you wish to break these treaties, you may do so. They said, that, but there's going to come a time when the earth itself will rise up and purify itself. And this will be announced. It will be announced by the speaking of one of 16 great ones on the west coast of this land. And when the six, one, first of the 16 great ones speaks, the purification will have begun. It was a little over five years ago when Mount St. Helens, one of the 16 great volcanoes on the west coast of this land, spoke. The Seattle Times did a special interest story. They went over to Watson Totus and Woodrow Bill, 